Hi everyone. It's been a while since I've had an astronomy report. I've been busy with the garden and the weather has been very active out here as you may have been noticing on some of my videos about the severe weather threats and tornado threats and we actually had tornado touchdown one only about 30 miles to the west of me did a lot of damage out in the Pembroke area but right now I want to talk about astronomy and the telescopes and the mount. I sent my CGX mount back to Celestron for servicing and repair. Uh, the mount's been out here for about five years now and it was showing some wear and tear and uh, I sent it back and when it came back boy was I surprised. Let's take a look. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. More tape. Okay. I'm done with this. That was. There we go. And oh my gosh, it looks almost brand new. That's my old uh, hand controller. I swear, this, look, this, this almost looks brand new. I'm impressed. All right. Let's get it out of the box. That's going to be the fun part. Yep, yeah, there it is. Okay. All right, before I put the mount on top of the tripod, I want to make sure the tripod is level. So I take out my handy dandy leveler, my plane here, and check it out. And it's, see, so yeah, with this leg here, it's level. This leg here is level. And the north leg is level. The thing about this mount, it's got a handle on it right here. It helps, but anyway, make sure I don't get my fingers caught in that slot there. Let's see. There we go. We just line these up with the screws, like so, and yeah, that's north. Okay. Next thing I got to do is put in the screws. These are right here to bolt it in, like so. There we go. Yeah, they, they, they definitely painted this mount. It's, they did a nice job cleaning it up. They lubricated it, changed the, uh, one of the gear motors. And now, one of the tests the main test, I want to make sure this PC uh, USB port works. Now, I can, I can connect to the mount with my computer via the um, hand controller, but this mount also has a USB port on the mount itself, kind of like the uh, EQR6 Pro mount. Uh, this uh, Celestron mount has the PC connector as well, so let's try to connect that up. Now, this is the onboard computer that I use for this telescope. It's a Windows 10 computer, and it has four USB ports and, uh, well, a couple HDMI ports, which I don't need. And it has Wi-Fi, so I connect directly from uh, my computers upstairs to this system down here, and I can control the telescope. The first thing I have to do, of course, is to hook up the computer to the telescope, which I have in this plastic bag to protect it from the uh, moisture elements of our humid atmosphere here in Savannah. So th this will sit right in this area here. This is the USB cord that I have connected to the CGX mount. So I'm gonna fire up this computer and give it a shot. All right, the first thing I wanna do is connect to the outdoor computer, the uh, Telescope One computer and I'm going to go into the uh, desktop connection. There it is right there. I have my choices of uh, computer 
A telescope number three, two, or one. And I'm going to take well, actually three, two, or one. Uh, this is telescope one, the primary telescope. And I'm going to connect to that, and it connects. There we go. And there we have it. Um, so now I'm going to go into Celestron PWI, CPWI, sometimes known as. And let's see if it connects through the USB 2 port. So I'm going to connect. I have the choice going to Wi-Fi, the hand controller, which I usually use for the other mounts and lately have been using for this mount. Or in this case, I want to try to connect to the USB port on the mount itself, on the CGX mount. So let's try it. And, sir, and I found it. Okay. It connected to the mount. Son of a gun. Thank you, Celestron. You fixed it. All right. Another nice feature of using the USB port is you no longer need the hand controller to control the telescope. It's all done through CPWI. Uh, let's do a quick align. I'm just going to go through a quick align and say ready. Okay, now the scope is trying to align itself. And I, I don't have any cameras or anything. I don't have the scope on it or not, but it, it, it should align itself find the uh, North Celestial location and North Celestial Pole location. And once it's done with that, it will um, park itself pointing at the North Celestial Pole. Well, let's take a look here. All right. It says the alignment is successful, so I'm, I'm good to go. All right. So, um, looking at the entire sky here, all right, it says it's pointing at the North Celestial Pole. Yeah, that looks like it is. All right. Next thing up, mount the telescope onto the mount itself. Another fun job. It's not the lightest scope in the world. All right, before I mount the telescope to the mount itself, I'm going to put on a couple of counterweights. Uh, this is not the lightest thing in the world. And you don't want it to be overbalanced either. So I'm going to put on one counterweight to begin with, and then I'll add more uh, after I get the telescope on the mount itself. Here we go. I'm going to put this up here. Now there is a little device here you can put on to keep the mount from sli or the weights from sl sliding off. Uh, I'm just going to put that on just for a little bit, just to make sure. Now, here's the, the fun part: the scope itself is the 11 inch, and it slips into this groove up here. So I'm going to get a good firm grip on it. And I like to take the lens cap off, but careful I don't put my fingers on the lens itself. But I get a better grip on it this way. And I, I, I got to get it up here. Okay, get in there. You got to get it in the groove. There we go. It's going to be somewhere around there. Let's just lock it in. Did I get it? Yeah. Is it on both sides? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm impressed with this mount. It, it looks brand new. Okay, uh, balancing will come up next, but uh, let's, uh, let's work on that. Make sure it's tight. I don't want it to slide off, obviously. Now, on this telescope, I have a Pegasus power pack um, and that gives me a uh, power to my dew shield my dew heaters here and uh, yeah this this little power box is kind of nice it has uh, several USB ports let's see four four USB ports if I want to plug into that and then route it down into the computer itself so basically I only have one cord actually two cords coming off the telescope I have the power cord 
and then the USB 3 cord that comes off the power box. All right, trying to keep the center of gravity of the weights equal to the center of gravity of the telescope so that when it's moving in the right ascension, it will give me better tracking if the center of gravities are the same on both sides of the axis. Well, that's my theory anyway. Okay. Let's see how this balances here. I might not have to use all three because right now I'm not I'm not using this 7X extender, which has a lot of weight to it because that's a lot of glass uh, and it, it goes off in the backside, adds weight to the telescope. So let's see if this balances right here. I'm going to hold it just in case. Let's see, how about this one here? All right. A little bottom heavy at the moment. That's all right. Not bad, pretty close. Let's bring this up a little bit. Of course, I don't have the camera or the dew shield on yet, so that's going to make a difference too. And I'll rebalance this after I get those pieces of equipment mounted. All right. Gosh, I think I'm going to have to take these weights off and spray paint them black as well to match the telescope. The telescope is looking too, or the uh, mouth is looking too good uh, with these rusty old weights. That's pretty good. It's a little bottom heavy at the moment, not much, just a little bit, but I got put on my other weights, um, other equipment, the camera. This is probably going to be weird looking. Yeah, that's going to have to go up. So take a good firm hold on the telescope. I put my shoulder into it as well, just to help a little bit. This has got to go forward. Right about there, let's try that. Again, I don't want it to fall off. That would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Just... Well, now it's top heavy, that's okay because I don't have the cameras on yet, so that's good. So, so far, so good. All right. Well, since then, I, I've changed the telescope from the C11 uh, over to the Orion uh, Maxitoff Newtonian uh, astrograph. It's a 190 millimeter uh, uh, scope and uh, it's a fine scope as well. I wanted a wider field of view uh, so uh, I, I took off the 11 inch. I'm going to put the 11 inch on the CGM mount that I also sent back to Celestron to get fixed. That one's about seven years old and they uh, are, have fixed it and it's on the way back and I'll be putting up that 11 inch scope on that. I primarily want to use the uh, larger scope right now anyway for planetary observation. I'm going to keep it at f10. That has a long focal length of 200, no, no, 2800 millimeters. That's about nine feet, I think. Anyway, uh, I have the uh, Orion Maxitoff Newtonian astrograph. It's a 190 millimeter scope. This has a wide field of view, f5.3 and it's got a focal length of 1,000 millimeters. So that's the scope I'm using right now, and this is the setup that I have. Uh, took a lot of the uh, uh, devices off the, the 11 inch and put it on the um, astrograph here. Uh, this is my Pegasus auto uh, uh, power supply and dew uh, regulators, dew strap regulators. I have my guide scope here. The, uh, that's a 240 millimeter uh, F4 scope uh, with the uh, 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 ASI 174 Mini for my guide camera. And uh, I have the uh, mounts uh, connected, as you can see, via USB, the USB port right here. And that's how I connect to the computer. And uh, everything's working perfectly right now. 
So I'm very, very pleased about that. So with that being said, let's take a look at some of the pictures uh, that I took with the C11 and a couple with the uh, astrograph uh, over the last several uh, weeks uh, as I was setting up this system and plowing through the severe weather uh, events across our area. This is M82, or the Cigar Nebula, and this was taken at F10 on the C11 uh, telescope on the CGX mount. And as you can see, it it's, fills up quite a bit. This is not cropped. This is the full view of the uh, uh, telescope at uh, 2800 millimeter focal length. Now this is with the uh, UV IR cut filter. The next image, this one right here, same uh, settings and everything, except I changed filters. This was the uh, uh, Optolong L Enhanced filter. They say you shouldn't use these narrowband filters on galaxies, but guess what? <laughs> on, on, on this one, you certainly could on the uh, uh, M82, the Cigar Galaxy. Anyway, let's look at another view of this. This is F7. Um, uh, the camera rotation was 90 degrees from the other one or so. But this is the same galaxy at F7, M82. This is the Sombrero Galaxy M104 at F10 from the C11 telescope. As you can see, it fills up the entire view just about. This is uncropped once again. This is the entire view uh, of the uh, C11 at 2,800 feet, uh, 2,800 meters. Uh, this is uh, NGC 4535, uh, also known as the Lost Galaxy. And uh, this is about somewhere in the ballpark of 56 million light years away. Uh, you can see I had a little bit of issues. The stars are not great. I, I was a little bit out of um, collimation as well as the tracking didn't, uh, just didn't do well that night. But uh, still, you know, 56 million light years away, not too bad. And this is the uh, Sunflower Galaxy, M63. Uh, I think that's somewhere between 25 to 29 million light years away. I used the Orion Maxitoff Newtonian astrograph to get this image right here. Once again, this is the full view of the uh, uh, shot. It was not cropped whatsoever. You can also see some galaxies off to the right and off to the left over here. But uh, the Sunflower Galaxy. But these are just some of the pictures I took over the last several nights uh, with the uh, CGX mount. My channel is a little bit different from other astronomy channels because it's not just astronomy, it's nature. Uh, I have a lot of gardening uh, videos I'll be posting and have posted some weather information for our local area uh, here in southeast United States uh, when, when the events happen. Tropical meteorology when the hurricanes start spinning up in the Atlantic and it looks like it's going to be another active year. They're expecting about 19 named storms this year. Normal's about what? 12 or 13. So yeah, it's going to be above normal uh, for this year in the tropics. So I'll be uh, keeping an eye on that as well. But if you like this kind of content, feel, hit, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And so you'll be able to get these updates as I uh, uh, post them on my YouTube channel. So here we are in astronomy right now. And I always say at the end, you know, the heavens are filled with majestic glories, all in a sky near you. So get out at night and look up Look up at the stars and then look. Thanks for watching.